sweet. Come on, kid. That ain't five minutes. Hey, come on, brother. Brother came to be, brothers came to have a conversation in order because brothers just. Hey, brother, man up. Yeah, all right. So we them chosen people. Moses walked us all out of Egypt and gave his laws and he said we supposed to keep them. They said we exposing people. Exposing. But really we examine effects. It's hard to hide when we seek and expose your evil. Brother, real quick, let me ask you a question, okay? Two minutes. Let me ask you this. You believe in God, brother? Said you do. Now, you believe in the God of the Bible? The God of the, God of the Quran. Now, what's the name of the God of the Quran? Are you Muslim, brother? Now, you should know. Allah. Now, what's the word Allah mean? Say it means God? So, the word Allah, do you know what language it comes from? It comes from a Hebrew word, Allah, which means the power. So, it really comes, and where do you find the power? Now, you found that in Genesis 101, right? So, when you go into the Quran, it even speaks about the Torah, which is Genesis and the Torah. It also speaks somebody. Black boys were free. Before show me something new. More than likely we will. So all you saying is true. Right? All y'all saying is true. Oh, don't go away. Where you going, brother? Where you going, brother? Come on. We got five minutes with you, brother. We're going to show you something. Because we're going to show you that when you read the Quran, it speaks about a specific group of people. But what's the main group of people that it talks about? Okay, I got you. So who are the chosen people that you read about in the Quran? There's one. So, but in the Quran, it speaks about a specific group of people that got. Listen, 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 brother, listen, brother. When you when you read in the Quran. And it speaks about a specific group of people that God took and put above other people. What? Okay, so I'm going to read this. Actually, I'm going to have a brother read this for you. This is going to be Surah 2, and it's going to be verse number 42. You have it, okay? I I two and 47 is 2 and 122. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 122. 122. Yeah. This is in the Torah. Uh, Quran, better yet. All right. This is this is out of the Quran. This is Torah 2, 122. Read that. O children of Israel. Oh, who? O children of Israel. O children of Israel. Read. Remember my favor, which I conferred upon you. That what? And that I exalted you. I did what? And that I exalted you. What does it mean to exalt somebody? Is that what? It says free him? No, to exalt somebody needs to put somebody on a higher pedestal. To exalt somebody needs to raise somebody up. Then I exalted you above what? Above all your contemporaries. All your contemporaries are all the other people or masses that are around you. So even in the Bible, this is Muhammad speaking. This is who you, this, this is who you, this is the Quran. This is the Quran speaking about Allah. It says that I took the children of Israel and I preferred you above your contemporaries. Right. Okay. So, so it means okay. one. So it means okay. that they won. So, so before it, the Quran. So it means talking before the Quran. Brother, we talking before the Quran. Somebody give me first Corinthians fourteen forty. Hold on, brother. So the word don't change. Brother, it's just at that time. Can somebody give me side record eleven and seven too? Come on, kid. That ain't five minutes. Hey, come on, brother. Brother came, and be, brothers came to have a conversation in order because brothers just. Hey, brother, man up. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say it, but brothers came to have a decent conversation, man. The Quran is toilet paper, like that brother right. said last That's right. Man, brothers got to, my people got to come up out of that religion, man, before the whole side comes back and really destroys this place and all these idols. Like it says in Wisdom of Solomon 14 chapter, it says, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. Right. So the Lord is going to come upon what? Allah, well not Allah itself because there is no Allah. It's right. going to come upon that rock that they worship. It's going to come upon Shiva and Buddha and all these other religions, these idols that our people continue to uh, 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 get down with. Somebody go Isaiah 62 and give me verse number 6. I'm going to kick it off. You can't even have a simple conversation about a brother's religion and I don't get any emotion. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6. Bring it up. I have set watchmen upon thy hill. Uh, Jeremiah 49. Uh, Salakia. I have set watchmen upon thy walls. Right. O Jerusalem. Oh who? O Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Which shall never hold their peace. Hey, king. 
Hey, King, I gave you a flyer right earlier. Hey, brother, let me talk to you for two minutes, brother. 120 seconds. Real quick, brother. Do you believe in God, brother? You, can you do us a quick favor? You mind putting that out for us, brother? Brothers up here, we stopped smoking a little while ago, brother. We appreciate that, man. You believe in the Bible, right? Do you believe in the God of the Bible? Right now, let me ask you a very simple question. What's your nationality for your race? What? Now look at your hoodie. Is your hand the same color as your hoodie? So why are we calling on someone color? Now we're not. See what I'm saying? So if man is calling you black, we call ourselves what? African American, Negro, colored. Are those are those actual nationalities and races? Nah. If I'm Chinese, what land can I go back to? What what language am I gonna go speak? Chinese, what food am I gonna eat? China, I got a, a, they have to hear the dragon, the rat, the dog, they got their own culture. What land, what language, what culture do we come from? We don't even know. Somebody give me that Isaiah 1 and 6. We don't even know, brother. Right, because our people are lost. Right, think of that, what, what the government wants to call us, African Americans, invented in the 80s. They call our colonists black when we came over here in slavery. So you gotta understand, these are terms and bywords that they were putting on our people to, to turn us away from what we are, what we truly are, who we truly are, right? Somebody go to Jeremiah 17, 11. Like I said, I'm only gonna take a couple minutes of your time, brother, but this is very important, right? Because today is gonna be the day that you gotta find out who you truly are, according to God. Because everything we're gonna, everything we're gonna bring out gonna be strictly from the Bible, right? Which is the words of God, you will agree, right? So watch this, give me something, somebody give me that Isaiah. Isaiah chapter one, verse six. Bring it up. Three, from the three, soul three, of the foot. Verse three. My bad. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 1, verse 3. Bring right. it up. The ox knoweth his owner. And the what? And the ass, his master's grid. The ox and the ass are two dumb animals. Right? That's why the ass is literally called a jackass. Because it's a dumb animal. Right? right? But what? But Israel. But who? But, but Israel. Israel. But Israel, the Israelites, when you read the Bible, does what? Doeth not know. Read. My people do not consider. So the Israelites, according to the Bible, they don't know who they are. That's why when you read like Jeremiah 50 and 6, the Lord calls the Israelites the lost sheep because they don't know who they are. The same way two dumb animals, they know who their master is. They know where to go. But our people, we don't even consider. We don't even care. Right? So we have to come to the understanding of who we truly are. We're not a color, brother. We're not these labels that they continue to put on us. We're a special group of people on the earth. Right? Who, you watch any sports, brother? Don't watch those sports. Who's the greatest basketball player of all time? Mike. Who's the second? Who's Kobe? Who's third? And then, all right, who's the greatest football player of all time? I say it's Barry Bonds. I know brothers got their opinions on it. Barry Sanders. I say that's my that's the best. That's the goat. Who's the greatest golfer of all time? Tiger. But that's a white man's sport. Why are we the goat over in a sport? Who cooks better than your grandma? Your mom? <laughs> <laughs> does, Karen, does Karen that's around the corner cook better than your people? You know that's the term for the white woman, right? Does Karen, does a white woman cook better than your people? Do white, do these white folk dress better than us? Rap better than us? Sing better than us? Why we do everything better than everybody? But we living at the bottom of society. That don't make no sense. How come you find the, the, the best people when you go to the hoods and the ghettos and the slums? Why are we in that situation? You said what? Because he is whiteies. Because he is white folk, right? But you got to understand that we got put in that situation because of the Most High God. Right? Somebody go to Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you why. Because what our claim is that, you see the sign? We're the Israelites, brother. That's why I said Israel doth not know. The Israelites, when you read the Bible, these are God's chosen people. But God made a covenant with these people, and he said, if you keep my commandments, then I'm a blessing. If you don't keep my commandments, then guess what? I'm gonna curse you. You got kids? You don't got no kids? Now, if you had, when you was a kid, right? If you didn't do what your parents told you to do, what was gonna happen? You was gonna get disciplined, right? So if you got disciplined by your parents, how much more you think you're gonna get chastised by the most high God for not doing what he told you? It's not a lot more, it's the same thing, it's the same parallel. Right? Somebody give me Deuteronomy 28 and start at verse 1. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Bring it up. And it shall come to pass. Watch this. If thou shalt not hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, real quick, are you familiar with the man Moses? All right, now Moses is the one that went into Egypt. You ever heard the term, let my people go? Moses went to Egypt to the Pharaoh. This really happened. This is real life. Went to the Pharaoh in Egypt and told him by the commanded by God and told him, let my people go, meaning let God's people go. The people that was there were the Israelites. 
they were slaves. They're the ones that built the uh, the cities of Ramses and the pyramids and everything like that. They're the people that built that stuff. Moses went by that by the mouth of God and told him to let my people go. This is Moses after they left Egypt talking to them in the wilderness. And this is what he told them. Read on. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt not hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you don't listen to God, to what? To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Right. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high. So if you listen to the Most High God, the Lord's going to set you on high. Read. Above all nations of the earth. So the Lord's going to... The Most High God is going to set the Israelites on high above all people that are on the earth. Right? Go to verse 15. Now watch. That's one part of the covenant. Right? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 15. 28 and 15. 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass. Right. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, if you don't listen to the Most High God, read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Now, if you don't listen to the Most High God and the commandments that he gave you, that what? That all these curses. That what? That, that all, all these curses. curses. That all, is a curse a good thing, brother? Not nah, shall what? Shall come upon thee. And overtake me. Now the Lord said you either gonna keep my commandments and I'm gonna bless you, or you're not and I'm gonna curse you. Right. What do you think the Israelites did? You said what? I mean I'm saying between the blessing, you think they kept the commandments or not? You don't think they did. Well they did it, right? When you read Daniel 9-11, it tells you that the Israelites did not keep the commandments, so guess what happened to them? The curse is happening. Right? Now read verse 46. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 46. And they shall be upon thee. Now these curses shall be upon you for what? For a sign. For a what? For, for a, a sign. sign. What? And for a wonder. Right? And upon thy seed forever. How long is forever? Forever, right? Eternity. Now what does a sign help you do? It show you the way. It show you direction. It helps you identify something. So these curses are going to be for a what? A sign on the Israelites for how long? So that means to this day. So if you want to know who the Israelites are, guess what you got to do? You got to see the signs, which are what? The curses. Now we're going to show you three curses that happened to the Israelites. Right? You're going to tell me who they are. Right? Go to verse 16. Verse 16. Right? Cursed shall thou be in the city. What the Lord said? Cursed, Cursed shall thou be in the city. city. And curse shall not be in the field. Now, who you say lives in the worst condition in the city? You know what? You said poor people? What race of people? Ethnic group? Black people? You sure it's not Chinese people? No, you're right. It's not them. It's black people. So the Lord said the Israelites, they're going to be cursed in the city. They're going to be the ones that you find in the ghettos, in the hoods, in the trenches, right? And those same people, they're going to be cursed in the field. What was black people doing in the field? Except dying, picking cotton, picking tobacco, sugar cane. We was the one that was in the field labor. 23 hours a day, we get to rest for an hour and we gotta go right back at it. Right? So the Israelites, they're cursed in the city in the field. What what group of people does that curse match? That match the Israelites. But today, what race of people would that match? Black people. Go to verse number 54. And can you go to verse 68? The book of Deuteronomy. Hey, can you go to Judah? 5 and 11. Go ahead. Chapter 28, verse 54. Right. So that the man that is tender among you. Right. And very delicate. So to be tender and delicate means to be loving. The man that's loving towards you, read. His eye shall be evil toward his brother. Now his eyes are going to be evil toward his own brother. What people is out here hating their own people? Hating their own brother? Us. Right? You don't see white people. They talk about, hey, Bill. Great weather we're having, right? We we down there, we like, nigga, what you looking at? Right? Why you step on my shoes? Right? Read on. And toward the rip to the wife of his bosom. And toward the and toward his own wife. What people is out here putting their hands on their woman? Most often us. Right? Now watch this. Read. And toward the remnant of his children. Which what? Which he shall leave. Which he shall what? Which, which he, he shall, shall leave. leave. Toward his own children. Which he's gonna what? Sam? <coughs> you going to sit again? 
You're going to abuse them too. But he said, towards the, you're going to have an evil eye towards his own children, which he's going to leave. What people is known for leaving their own kids? Us. So who is these persons that? Us. You see what I'm saying? Somebody go to Isaiah 42 and 22. I'm right. here already. Bring that out. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and verse number 22. I, bring it out. I really want you to listen to this right here. Bring that out. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Read on. They are all of them snared in holes. And what? And they are hid in prison houses. And they are what? And, and they, they are, are hid in prison houses. houses. What people make up 80% of the prison population to this day? We do. So who the Lord got to be talking about? Who? The Bible got to be talking about us, brother. But did the Lord call us black? Did he call us niggas? What did he call us? He called us his children. But who are God's children? He said everybody. Uh, might go extra screen test for Exodus 3 and 10. Because you're right, we got children. But everybody can't be a child of the Lord. There's a lot of kids out here. Is everybody out here your, your kid? Nah, right? If you have a seed, that's your child, right? So the Lord has his own children. Everybody that's running around the earth ain't his kids. He has a specific group of people that's his children. Watch this, read that. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 10, right? Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. We're going to read you a few more, brother. I know you got your family with you. Watch this. It's the book of Exodus chapter 3, verses 10. Right? Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. This is God speaking, right? He's talking to Moses. So I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. That what? That thou mayest bring forth my people. My what? My, my people. people. My people. The what? The children of Israel. The who? The, the children, children of Israel. Israel. The children of Israel. That's God's children. Those That's, right. That's his people. Right? So we talking about the Israelites, right? He said he's going to punish the He didn't punish everybody. He only punished a certain group of people, which right. were the Israelites. And those, he, he cursed a certain group of people, which are who? The Israelites. And what people fall under the curses? We do. Making us who? Make, well, we curse, but what group of people does that make us? The Israel, there you go, brother. The Israel. Right? Because right. 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 we the people that what? Fit the curses. Right by default. We the only people out here leaving our kids, beating on our woman, hating our own brother, living in the trenches, picking cotton in the, in the fields. Now watch this, read verse 68. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Now you really tell me who this fits, right? Read this. This is very specific. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So what would, we talked about earlier. Do you remember what the Israelites were doing in Egypt? What were they doing? No, you good. They were slaves. They was uh they was building the pyramids in the cities, right? So when the Lord's talking about Egypt, it don't always just it don't mean the physical land Egypt all the time, right? It generally means slavery. Read that in Judah for me, you still got that? It's the book of Judas chapter five and verse eleven. Right? Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtility with them. And brought them low with laboring and brick. And did what? And made them slaves. And did what? And made them slaves. So the king of Egypt rose up on the children of Israel, brought them low, and made them slaves. They were slaves in Egypt. So when the Lord said, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt, he just means I'm going to bring you back into that same condition. I'm going to bring you back into slavery. What people who for the earth is known for going into slavery? Us. Now, what mode of transit? We took the set. Did we take the, end, the, the NJ transit? Or, or the Spirit Airlines into slavery? We did? Nah, how we get it? We walked? We walked across the Atlantic Ocean? <laughs> boats, there you go, brother, boats, right? We piled us on a sardinus at the, that's what's called, sardinus. They sardinus to the bottom of a ship, brought us over here on, what was it? Like a three plus month journey? Half of us died. Cargo slave ships. Cargo slave ships brought us all the way over here, and we was forced to serve as slavery in America. So when the Lord read this again, so when the Lord says this, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. When he said, I'm gonna bring you into Egypt again, it means I'm gonna bring you back to slavery again with what? With, with ships. With what? With, with ships. What people went into slavery on ships? Us. The white man can't say that. The Chinese man can't say that. The Arab man can't say that. The only people that can say that is who? It's us. This is a prophecy that was written thousands and thousands of years before it happened. So if the Lord said this is gonna happen to the Israelites, and this happened to us, then who must we be? We as children, which is who? The Israelites, brother. We must be the Israelites, right? Now I know you got your family with yourself, but you gotta know that, brother. You were Israelite. And the Lord said that you gotta you gotta obey his law. You gotta keep his commandments, brother. But over all that, you gotta have faith. You gotta truly believe that you were Israelite. Right? Cause that's how you believe you're gonna die one day. Yeah. Now you believe you believe in heaven and hell? Yeah. Where do you think you're gonna go? 
to heaven. Everybody think they're gonna go to heaven. But there's a way to get into heaven. Somebody go to Revelation 21, 22 and 14. There's a way to get into heaven, right? And it's not by just being out here, just doing whatever you want to do or doing what the world does. Everybody going to the club, smoking weed, turning up. You think everybody that's doing that going to heaven? Nah, right? There's a way to get into heaven. The Lord gave you a manual on how to get to heaven, right? And go to uh, go to Luke 10, and go to verse 25, read that. There's the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 14. Watch it Blessed are they that do his commandments. What the Lord say? Blessed are they that do his commandments. Read. That they may have right to the tree of life. Right. And may enter in through the gates into the city. That's how, that's the city. That's the kingdom of heaven. That's set up for our people. Right. When you read Revelation, the 21st chapter, it tells you that there's 12 gates to get into the kingdom of heaven. This just so happens that there's 12 tribes. And on each gate is a name of one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So for, in order for you to get into heaven, if you do die one day, is to do what? Is to keep the commandments of God and keep the faith in Christ. That's the way you do it. Go to 14 and 12 in that same chapter, read this. It's the book of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 25. Right? Yeah. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He's talking about the kingdom. Man. Eternal life equates to the kingdom of heaven. This is, you know, you know about Jesus Christ. This lawyer's talking to Christ. He asked him, hey, listen, how do I get the kingdom of heaven? How do I get eternal life? Listen what, listen what Christ said. He said unto him, what is written in the law? What did the Lord say? What, what is, is written, written in the law? law? Read. How readest thou? So he said, listen, how can you not read it? What's written in your law? You got to do what? You got to keep the commandments that God gave you. Right? You heard of 10 commandments before. There's more than 10, but it's very basic. You follow 60,000 laws in America, but you can't follow a few commandments that God gave you that's going to give you eternal life. You got to think about that, brother, as an Israelite. All right, brother, let me give you one, let me give you one more scripture. Somebody give me Acts 3 19. Or give, actually go to, go to Acts 17 and 30. This is, this is book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. Hold on, okay. that's your family over there? Hey, brother, this is something you guys, you guys, you guys uh, tell them. You guys explain to them. We the Israelites. We really God's people. But this is something I know we ain't get much time because we can really break it. We can really, we can be out here for hours talking to you, brother. But it's very important, very imperative for you to know who you are. Because these white folk out here, the people that's higher up, hey, listen, they the ones that's telling you just a nigga. You black. You ain't nothing. Black is always associated with something negative. You gotta think about that. A black cat, black magic. What black, else? Black ball. Black. black yeah, black you get mug. black ball, black. Any of that stuff. Black. It's always associated with negative. But they call themselves white, which is associated with what? Always something good. Pure. Purity. You see what I'm saying? You gotta think about that. You're not black, brother. We just looked at your hand and looked at your hoodie. God called you an Israelite. You're gonna go by what man call you or what God call you. Always gonna go by what God call you. And he called you an Israelite. And the way you get, and the way to get that eternal life is to keep the faith in Christ and to keep the commandments. Because Christ the one that came and died for you. That's why you live in today, right? So you got to understand that, brother. We got a lot more information for you, but I know you, you know, you got, I know you got something, brother. He said what? It's your birthday? All right, brother. Well, we gonna give you a flyer, brother. You gotta really look into it. I got you with one more scripture. Let me get that at seventeen. This is Acts chapter seventeen and verse thirty, right? In the times of this ignorance. God winked at God did what? God, God winked so at the time of ignorance when you didn't know you was an Israelite, you didn't know you had to keep the commandments. Because when you break God's commandments, you're in sin. Everybody always talk about sin this, sin that, whatever. People don't even know what sin is. And there's a specific definition in the Bible that tells you when you break God's laws, then you're in sin. The laws of God was given to the Israelites. So when we're breaking God's laws, we're going to continue to be in sin. Sin is the reason we the curse is happening to us. You got to remember that. So you gotta understand if you don't want to repeat that same thing that our people went through with slavery and everything, we gotta do what? We gotta keep the commandments. We gotta stop sinning, right? So you gotta understand what sin is, right? Hey, hey, King, read that from the top. At the times of this ignorance, God winked at. So the time when you didn't know you was Israelite, you didn't know the commandments and everything like that. God winked at that because you didn't know nothing. But now what? But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. To do what? To, to repent. repent. So you gotta understand what the commandments are. First, you gotta understand who you are. You're not black. You're not a nigga. You a king on this earth. You an Israelite. According to God. Forget what Joe Biden talking about and Donald Trump and them niggas, right? The Lord said that you're a king and you're an Israelite and you gotta keep his command. You gotta repent and keep his commandments and keep the faith of Christ. That's how you're gonna get eternal life. All right, brother? You got a flyer? Yeah, I got one. I got one. We gonna I got do an Instagram, right? Got, I think so. All right, all praises, brother. Yeah, get another one, brother. Get all praises. All praises.
Lord willing, that brother look into it. He seemed like a brother that might, you know, he might actually do his due diligence, man. Somebody give me uh, Jeremiah 49 and 14. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Real quick, let me get 60 seconds, okay? 60 seconds. Jeremiah 49 and 14. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 14. Bring it out. I have heard a rumor from the Lord. Right. An ambassador is sent unto the heathen. How you doing, sister? Hey, sister. You believe in God, sister? You got two minutes to hear the words of God? 60 seconds, sister, for the words of God. You say you don't got time? You don't got time for the words of God? Huh? All the time. All the time? Oh, then what's up? Our people, man. Read that from the top. Jeremiah 49 and 14. I have heard a rumor from the Lord. Right. An ambassador is sent unto the heathen. So I'm going to just pick up where I left off last week. Right? The ambassador of the Lord going out not only to the 12 tribes to wake our people up and bring us back to the Most High God, but we're also sent out to what? As an ambassador among the heathen. To let them know that the time is coming short. Hey, hey, mis hey mister. Hey, sir. Sir. Come talk to me real quick. To let these people like this know, hey, listen, their time's getting cut short, man. And the Lord's about to overthrow this place. And the Lord's about to shut down Babylon these last days, right? Keep, keep going. An ambassador is sent unto the heathen, right? Saying, gather your, gather ye together. What the Lord say? Gather ye together and come against her. And do what? And, and come, come against, against her. her. That's that's the Lord. That's, give me some, somebody. Go. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, real quick, two seconds, brother. Hey, brother, don't shake us off like that, brother. We your brothers. Hey, brother, you're going to be destroyed these last days. You don't come back and get your mind right. The Lord said ambassadors sent among the heathen. To what? To gather these nations together to come up against Babylon. Somebody go to Joel 3 and 9. Right? Because you can see, if you're really paying attention, you can see everything that's going on. All these nations that's getting together. Um, Nigeria is set to join BRICS. And we know BRICS is going to get together and going to overthrow America as well in the U.S. dollar. And then this place is going to be taken out. Right? What? So give, give me this uh, second Corinthians 5 and 20. Because the ambassador is the one that got to come out here and speak the truth. He's got to tell these other nations what's going on. Right? Read that. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Bring it up. Now then we are ambassadors for Hamashiach. What did the Lord say? Now then we are ambassadors for Hamashiach. Can you go to 2 Corinthians? Four and go to verse number five. It says we are ambassadors of Mashiach. And the right. ambassador of Mashiach coming out here and doing what? Teaching our people. But we're also ambassadors of Yahweh Bash and Yahshad. Can you go to uh, Jeremiah 28 and 28? And we know the ambassadors, the prophets of the Most High God, came out here and didn't just spoke to speak about peace, didn't just speak, speak about repentance, but also spoke about what? War. war. Right? The things that's coming to this earth. Because the Lord is a man of war. That's Exodus 15 and 3. Right? That's, 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 that's rudimentary. That's a rudimentary precept. That the Most High God, He's not just a nice guy on this earth. Read that from the top, Prophet Kishon. Now then, we are ambassadors for Hamashiach. Right. As though God did beseech you by us. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Real quick, let me get 60 seconds. Take a flyer then with you, brother. Take a flyer. You don't read, brother? You don't read? Brothers don't read no more, man. On a rainy day. That's what I'm saying. The Lord said that we're ambassadors for Hamashiach and we're ambassadors for Yahweh by Hashem Yahshah, man. So we come out here, guess what? We got to take, we got to tell these nations what's going on and tell them to get themselves together because war is coming to the earth, right? Read that in Jeremiah 28. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 8. 28, 28, 28. I don't have that. Oh, my book missing. Did you miss a part of your sword? Yeah, okay. Jeremiah 28, 28. You're missing that one page. Jeremiah 28, 28, because the Lord, not, like I said, the Lord not a nice guy. He's not just going to have, no, give me, uh, go to Prop, you got Proverbs 11. Oh, yeah, that's wild. Give me, give me Proverbs 11 at once. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 1. A false balance, a, what? a, a false balance is what? It's an abomination to the Lord. So the false spot, the Lord's not just going to be a nice guy and just all written, everything's just all good. The Lord said a false balance is an abomination. So the, war, the Lord has time for peace, but he has time for war as well. And the Lord sends the prophets out to let you know, hey, listen, that time of war is coming on this earth as we speak. We see all the nations gather themselves together, like it reads in Joel 3 and 9, and you see the weak saying, what? I am strong. And they're about to start coming up against America. Iran's not a big country. North Korea is not a big country. 
these countries are not outside of really China and Russia are not that big. But guess what? They all about to gather themselves together and come against America and destroy this place, right? right? Give me that Jeremiah 28, 28. You got Jeremiah 28, 28, 28. This the yeah, it's not 28 and 28 in Jeremiah. 28 and 8. So, yeah, he said he definitely it's said the book that of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old right. prophesied both against many countries right. and against great kingdoms right. of war. Of what? Of, of war. war. Peace. And of, of war. And of evil. Right. And a pessimist. And a what? And a pessimist. We know all this stuff is called another shutdown is coming. Right. War is on its way. Famine on its way. So we got to understand that this is a time that the Most High spoke about. And as an ambassador of the Most High God, we're literally coming out here to prophesy the same thing that the prophets of old talked about. That's right. Not just peace, not just repentance, but that this place has got to go down. It's going to go up in flames. Right? Bring that out. Read that again in 2 uh, Corinthians. So got that 5 and 20. Bible for John. This the book. Of Second Corinthians, chapter five, and verse number twenty, right? And it reads, "Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, right? As though God did beseech you, right? By us, right? We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God." What did the Lord say? Be, be ye reconciled, reconciled to God. God. We come out here to literally tell our people to be what brought back to the Most High God, be reconciled back as the sons of God, as the adoptions of men, right? So that's speaking. That's us speaking on Christ's sake. Hey, brother. Hey brother! Hey brother! So we really come out here not just to speak to our people, but also to these nations. And we're speaking the words of the Master. You still got that Second Corinthians 4 and 5? Second Corinthians 4 and 5. It's the book of Second Literally on Hamashiach's sake. Right? Read that. It's the book of Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 5. For we preach not ourselves. Right? But Christ, but, the who? but Christ, Christ read the the Lord, and ourselves your servants for your sake. Yeah, it says we preach not ourselves, but okay. read that from the top, Bible For we preach not ourselves, but Christ the the Lord, right? And ourselves your servants for your sake. So we preach not ourselves, but what? We preach Hamashiach, right? So we come out here literally and tell our people to repent and come back to the Most High God and to also tell these nations that this place is about to get thrown down. Who right. still has Joel 3 and 9? Uh, this is the book of Joel, nine. chapter 3, verses 9. Bring it out. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Right, so we come out here literally, like I said, to teach our people, but the Lord said to do what? Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Read. Prepare war. What did the Lord say? Prepare, Prepare war. war. Read. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Right. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. Right. And your pruning hooks into spears. Read on. Let the weak say, I, I am strong. What the Lord say? Let, Let the, the weak, weak say, say, I, I am, am strong. strong. Read. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together right. round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened. And come up to the body of Jehoshaphat. Right. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. See that the Lord is going to gather these nations in that valley, that final battle in the valley of Jehoshaphat, and he's going to judge the nations at one that's time. That's right. Right? So we got to understand that the Lord's not just all fun and games. Because that's what the Christian church is going to keep trying to teach you. The Lord's just all love. And right. God is love is only found in one verse. And it's always taken out of context. So we got to understand that God, that God's not just all love. God's a man of war, right. and he's going to show himself as a man of war in these last days. Right? As you say, somebody give me uh, Jeremiah 51 and go to verse number 11. Right? Because the Lord's going to show you he's a man of war in these last days. And if you're not right with the Most High God, if you're not right in the faith with Christ, hey, listen, these things are going to happen to you in these last days as well. The Lord, you're going to get thrown down with this place when war comes upon it. Right? You got that? This is the book of Jeremiah 51 and 11. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 11. No. Make right the arrow. What did the Lord say? What the Lord say? Make, Make right, right the, the arrow. arrow. Gather the shield. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. See that the Lord, this, 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 is, the, this is stuff they're not going to go into the church. When the Lord says raise up, read that part again. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. So when the Lord said he raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, you have to understand that in a prophetical sense. 
right? The Medes, the the per the Medes and the Persians were literally north of north of Israel and Babylon at that time when they came to overthrow Babylon. The Medes represent represent your modern day Russians. Who, when you look on a geo geographical location, the, the Russia is literally right north of America. So we have to understand when the Lord said that He's going to raise up the spirit of the Medes, it's literally talking about the Russians. Right? And the arrows that he's talking about are what? Are these missiles, are the silos, the quivers that literally hold these ICBM missiles with nuclear capability. Read on. For his device is against Babylon. What did the Lord say? For, For his, his device is against Babylon. The Lord said his device is against Babylon. Because when he's last day, the Lord's literally, somebody, can you, step, step it. can you go to Nahum 3 and 5? The Lord's literally exposing these white folks. The Lord's literally exposing America in these last days right before he throws it down. You're going to get exposed and then destroyed. That's how the Lord operates, right? The Lord's literally going to exp is exposing America, expo exposing Amalek, who you got climbing out the damn sewers. And if you didn't have Twitter, you would have known about that. Let that happen in the 80s and 90s. Nobody would have known about that, right? That Lord's literally using social media and the internet to expose America and expose these nations, man. Right? Read that in uh, Nehemiah 3 and 5. Oh, I mean, Nahum? Nahum. Nahum, sorry. This is the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 5. Right. Behold, I am against thee. What did the Lord say? Behold. I am against, I am against thee. Right. Says the Lord of hosts. The Lord said he's against this place. He said, behold, I am against thee. Read. And I will discover thy skirt. Right. Upon thy face. That's what the Lord is doing. He's discovering the skirts. I mean, what? He's exposing this place. Right? All the things that's going on. If you watch the State of the Union, you can see all the people that's up in the State of the Union that's yelling back at uh, uh, Joe Biden. That's going against the vision within, literally within the Union, within the uh, uh, the Capitol. Right? The Lord's exposing America and showing you the things that He's doing overseas, the things that He's doing within His own country to His own people. The Lord said, "I will discover thy skirts." Read. And I will show the nations thy nakedness. What did the Lord say? And, and I, I will show, show the nations. nations Thy the Lord said he's going to show the nation his nakedness, right? Your, meaning what? Your wickedness, right? The wickedness that's going upon in America, the Lord's showing it to you. Read on. And the kingdom thy shame. Right, so the Lord, and the kingdom thy shame. Because all these other nations see what's going on. That's why they have, uh, uh, what's going on, brother? Hey, brother, real quick, let me ask you a question, okay? What's your nationality? Uh, I'm mixed. So you mixed? What's yeah. your mother? Uh, black and Cuban. What's your father? Black and white. What's your father's father? Black. Say he's black. Right now, look at your jacket. Black. What's up? Black. What's your hand? What's your hand color? Beige. Say beige. Tan, right. bro. It's a, it's a derivative. It's brown. Of, it's brown. There you go. So are you actually black? Nah, we brown. We brown. So why are we calling ourselves black? That's what the system. That's what the system calls you. You believe in God? Of course. Did God call you black? He said we made His image. He said we made His image. They call us black. All right, I got you, brother. So when he put all people here, he gave all people different nations. That's why it says in the scripture that the Lord divided the nation. Yeah, he gave right? us different tongues too. He, so right, mean? he gave us different tongues, gave us different languages, different skin tones. He gave us different looks, different lands. So the question is, according to God, did he call you black? Did he call us black? No, he called us people. He called us. Well, you, you can say that, but he gave every nation a nationality. When you go right. into the Bible, like nowadays we call us, people call themselves Arab and Chinese and Japanese and Russian and black and Cuban. But when you go, you believe in the Bible. Do you find any of those terms in the Bible? So then, are those terms that God gave people? You can't, because you don't find them in there. You're right, we're descendants of Abraham, but what nation do we come from? Because the Lord said, out of Abraham, you will make many nations. So which nation do we come from? Israel. Said what? Israel. Hold on, say it louder, brother. Israel. Israel, how you know that? Right. You said we the Israelites, how you know that? I, I'm asking you, brother. Everybody found out some way, somehow, but how you find out? Because we be out here, right? So you listen to brothers up here before, right? Now, you listen to brothers up here before, now you got to take heed to them, right? Have you taken heed to any of the things the brothers told you? I mean, I'll be trying to be mindful of what's going on. You try to be mindful of what's going on, like yeah. in the earth and everything like that. Yeah. All right, well, the Lord said you gotta be, you gotta be a watchman, right? So you gotta watch. So you do gotta watch and see what's going on out here, and that's you being diligent in that sense. But you gotta also understand that while you're watching, there's things that you gotta be doing as well, right? Somebody, uh, go to Deuteronomy 10 and 12. There's stuff that you gotta be doing as well while you're watching. 
right? Bring this out. Go to uh this is the book of James, chapter 2 and verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith. Right. And I have work. Right. Shew me thy faith without thy work. And what? And I will shew thee my faith by right, my right, work. Right. So you might believe you're an Israelite and everything like that, but you gotta show that you believe by what? By 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 your work. Right? What's your work? My work. Like what's the work? Spread the word and you know. So so you believe in Christ, right? Yes. You believe Christ gave us the blueprint of what the works are? By the Bible. Yeah, you believe that, right? Yeah. Now what what are the works that Christ told us to do? You mean like the technology stuff? Okay, it's a little bit more than ten, but you're on the right track, right? So out of those ten commandments. Those are the things that you have to do. There's, like I said, there's more, more to it, right? But there's more to it, right? So you have to keep those commandments that the Most High God and Christ told you to do. What are those commandments? Give me five. Of the commandments? Don't Settle, kill, shall not kill, shall not steal, um, adultery, don't commit adultery, don't covet. Envy thy neighbor. Do not envy thy neighbor. Do not envy thy neighbor. That five? That five All right, now you, now you gave us five, right? Now we're going to give you five. Somebody go to Numbers 15. And somebody go to Exodus 35. Numbers. And somebody, and somebody go to uh, 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 um, Deuteronomy 14. What you got? Give me Deuteronomy. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14. And verse 8. And the swan. And the what? And, and the, the swan. swan. Probably what's the swan? Pork, right? Go ahead. Because it divided the hoop, yet drew it not the cut. It is unclean unto you. Right? Ye shall not eat their flesh. What did the Lord say? Ye shall, shall not, not eat, eat their, their flesh, flesh. Nor what? Nor touch their dead carcass. So the Lord said we can't do what? Pork, we can't. You said what? Eat pork or touch the carcass. We can't eat pork or touch the carcass. You ain't pork, brother? Nah, all praise the Lord. Right. So you can't eat no pork. You already know that. Right, read on. Speak up a little bit. These you shall eat of all that are in the water. Now he's going to talk about what's in the waters that you can't eat. Right, read on. All that has fins and scales shall you eat. Everything that has fins and scales, you can eat it. What has fins and scales? Fish. What type of fish? There's a lot of fish in the sea. Tuna, trout, right. um, tilapia, I right. guess, you know, salmon. Uh -huh. Catfish, right? Catfish. You can't eat catfish. Don't have fins. You don't have scales. Right? So no catfish. Like what? Read on. And whatsoever has not fins and scales. If it doesn't have fins and scales, ye may not eat. Of course that we can't eat it. That's catfish, crab, lobster, shrimp, uh, uh, calamari, oysters, oysters shellfish, crawfish, mussels. There you go. All that sea moss, seaweed, any of that stuff is all good. Right? So that's one command. No pork, no shrimp, no crustacean. You're going to put it under that. Somebody give me numbers. This is numbers 15. And 38. Speak, up, speak up a little speak, bit. Speak unto the children of Israel. Who the children of Israel? Us. Us. There you go, brother. Read on. And bid them that they make them princes in the borders of their garments. You ever heard this before? The Lord said that you got to put fringes in the borders of your garments. You never heard this. Right? Read on. Watch what we're going to show you. Throughout your generation. How long? Throughout your generation. Which goes on forever. Right? Read on. And that they put upon their that they put upon the fringe the border of a ribbon of blue. So when you look at every brother up here, what do you see on the bottom of their shirt? Fringes, fringes with the ribbon of blue. Now he's specific about the ribbon of blue, right? Because it represents royalty. But your fringe color can be any color. You see brothers with black, white, gold, whatever different color, right? So brother, you got to stuff for fringes, right? Read on on that. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all, all the commandments, commandments of the Lord. Lord. And what? And, and do them. And what? And, and do them. So it's a literal commandment. It's a physical commandment for you to remember the rest of the commandments. Right? If you, you sit down at the table and you got some pork, you don't eat no pork. Let's say you eat shrimp or crab. Let's just say you do. I don't know if you do or you don't. But let's say you do. You sit down and you look at the friend and you're like, damn, I can't even eat this stuff. The shrimp might have came as an appetizer that somebody ordered at the table and you just got there. The Lord said, guess what? You can't eat that stuff. Right? It might be the Sabbath day, you might be able to, you got you just got your check, and you about to go spend it and get, get a new work check. And you about to go spend it and get a new work check.
about to go get a brand new Warface jacket, right? A white drone with black one, right? And guess what? You gotta remember, listen, it's a Saturday. I can't be doing it. You might look around and you're like, damn, you gotta check yourself, right? <laughs> as a reminder to keep the rest of the commandments. Right? You never heard that before, right? That's the commandment of God. Because on it... That's because all they do is harp on the Ten Commandments. But the Lord never narrowed nothing down the Ten Commandments. There was always the 613 commandments, but we know that we can't keep all of them to a T in this land. Some are pertaining to the priest, the temple, the land, the women, stuff like that. So we gotta give you what um what's the word I'm looking for? What's applicable? What's um um uh, uh, practical? We gotta give you what's practical, right? We know you can keep wear fringes. Everybody up here got fringes. You're not forced to eat pork, right? So you gotta give you gotta understand what's practical. So we give you the, the, the starter pack, the practical stuff that you can keep. You can't eat no pork, brother. You can't eat no crab and lobster, no crustacean. You can wear fringes because it's easy, right? Most people think these on the fly anyway. Right? And it's also the commandments of God. When we broke the commandments of God, what happened? Huh? No, no, no. When when we broke the commandments of God, what happened to us? Huh? I can't see. I can't I said we sinners. Well, yeah, we sinners, but when we broke the commandments of God, we got brought to slavery. We got brought to America. Right? We got we, the most high turned his face against us, and now we're living in the, an, the land of our enemies. Right? Subject to the higher power. But now we keep the commandments of God, the Lord's gonna put the script. So that's why we need you to get on board, brother. You gotta keep the commandments, you gotta keep the faith. Why you got that voice I'm gonna come right back uh, uh, um, Who's got Exodus 35? The book of Exodus 35 and verse two. Read it up. You and Nehemiah 10. Six days shall work be done. The Lord said you got six days for work to be done, right? That's literally Sunday through Friday, right? Read. But on the seventh day, there shall be to you a holy day, right? A Sabbath of rest to the, the Lord. Lord. The Lord said, "You got six days to do whatever you got to do. You go. You got a job, brother? Yeah. How often you work? Five days a week. Five days a week. Monday through Friday. Friday. You got five days. You got six days to do whatever. You work five of them days. He said, on the seventh day, which is Saturday in modern day, the Lord said that what? It shall be for what? What? The there shall be to you a holy day, right? A Sabbath of rest to the Lord, right? Whosoever." You will work their rent. So you got six days to do whatever you gotta do. On the seventh day is the Sabbath. But if you're working on the Sabbath, what the Lord said? Whosoever do a work their rent shall be put to death. What the Lord say? Shall be put to death. The Lord said on that seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, which is the rest day, this holy day, if you're working on that day willingly, and guess what? The Lord said, going to be put to death. If you're liable to get put to death. That's why we know we have we have grace and mercy right now. But if this brother would have broken the Sabbath day back in the day, you would have got stoned. Right? Now you go, you might have been working on the Sabbath day, whatever the case is, you're still alive. Why? Because of grace and the mercy that Christ brought. Right? Read that in Galatians 2. And go to Romans 3 and 21. This is the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Right? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, right? But by the faith of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. But by the what? But, but by, by the faith, faith of, of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. Because you're not going to be justified by the law. If you were justified by the law, everybody would be dead right now, right? But by your faith. But that doesn't mean that you don't keep the law. Because what we read earlier, your works is your faith is determined by your what? By your works. So you got to keep the commandments that shows you have faith. You might fall short. But the fact that you have faith, that's what's going to justify you at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? Read that in Romans 3. It's the book of Romans, chapter 3, and verse number 21. Right? But now, the righteousness of God out the law. Can you go to, can, can you go to uh, Romans 3? Hold on. I need to talk to you. 3 and 21. This is... Yeah, go ahead. The book of Romans chapter verse chapter. The book of Romans chapter 3 verses 21. But now the righteousness of Yahweh right without the law without the what? Without, without the, the law, law righteousness of God because when you read Deuteronomy 6 and 25 it tells you that your righteousness is based on keeping the law. If you didn't keep the law you wasn't righteous. But now the righteousness of God without the law is what? It's manifest, right? Being witnessed by the law 
and the prophets. You read about this man in the law and the prophets, which what? Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith. Which is by what? Which is by faith. Read. Of Yahweh Shah unto all and upon all them that believe. So you believe on Christ, that's how your righteousness is going. That's how your righteousness is going to be established, and that's how you're going to be justified in the end time. But you keeping the law is mandatory. It tells you that in Revelation, the last chapter, the 14th chapter, Matthew, the uh, uh, 16th, 19th chapter, uh, Luke, the 10th chapter, it tells you all over that you got to keep the commandments, but you got to have faith that you're in the light and that you're going to be justified by believing in Christ. Right? So you got to keep these commandments. Brother, what we give you, like three or four? What, name, name three that we gave you all that. Uh, no four. Right? No that was all one. That's all one. That's all one. What are, what, damn it. You got the court, princess. There you go. Uh, and it's ready. We was in the middle of the third one. We was in the middle of the third one. I get it on first two. Who got Exodus 35? Whoever can get that. Exodus 35. 16. The book of Exodus 35, verse 2. Right up. Six days. Y'all work, we done. You paying attention, brother? Yeah, six yeah. days, and then we wrestle on the Sabbath. And you wrestle on the Sabbath. Which day is the seventh day? Today. It's today. When did the day start? What do you mean, like, 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 they tell you, what time do they tell you the day starts? What time, what time does the ball drop and everybody? Midnight. Midnight, so the day starts when? Midnight. That's what they say. Right. Watch this. Read that. This is Leviticus 23 to 32. Right. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. A Sabbath of rest. And ye shall put your soul in the ninth day of the month. Right. At evening. At when? At, at evening. evening. From evening until evening. From evening till evening shall what? Shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So that they don't start at midnight like they say it did. That don't even make sense. Would you go to the movie, a two hour movie, and start at the hour mark? Would you open up a book that's 10 chapters and start at chapter five? So why would you start in the middle of anything? Why does the day start in the middle of the night? That don't make sense. So the day starts when the sun goes down at evening. So Friday when the sun went down, that's when the new day starts. So now, guess what time the day ends? At the, at the evening. In that evening. At what time? What time is that right now? Six. So what? It's at six. Six thirty right now, something like that. All right. So your day's going to start when at evening and going to end that evening. So right now we're in the middle of the Sabbath. Day. Okay. It, which is what? What's the Sabbath day? Today, Saturday. Today's the Sabbath day, right? Yes. What is the Sabbath day? Day of rest. It's a rest day. It's a holy day. Are you, what are you, now what are, how do you keep the Sabbath holy? Because it's a holy day. By not working. By not working, what else? By, you know, you don't have the faith. <laughs> hey, somebody give me, read that, you still got that in my yeah, text? Yeah, yeah. Read that. Said, not you, not you, not this you. This is Nehemiah, chapter 10, and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, right. that we would not buy it of them. That what? That, that we, we would not buy it of them. them. When? On the Sabbath. On the what? On, on the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Or, or on the holy day. So the Lord said on the Sabbath and our holy days, we can't buy or sell. Right? So the Sabbath is a holy day. So we can't be out here buying and selling. We literally on Market Street. Ain't nothing to do on Market Street but to buy and sell. So, so when we come out here, we on the Sabbath day letting our people know that we're literally in sin right now when we go into these stores buying and selling. That's right. So the way you keep the Sabbath day holy is by not buying, not selling, and not working. Also not cooking. Somebody still got extra 35? Let's go straight to verse 3. Verse number 3. Hold on. You paying attention, brother? Yes, sir. I'm over here, man. No, I'm taking notes, actually. All praise the most high, brother. I like it. I like it. You won't be over here with us, my Or will Verse 3. Read it. Ye shall tempt no fire throughout your habitations. A pug the seven day. Meaning back then they had the sticks and the stones and they had to put in work to make the fire. Now you just turn on the oven, turn on your air fryer, your microwave, whatever the case is, 
the Lord said that we can't kindle a fire on the Sabbath. So brothers don't cook on the Sabbath day either. Right? So we don't buy, we don't sell, we don't cook, we don't work on the Sabbath day. That's how we keep it holy. Right? So right now it's the Sabbath. We out here doing the work. The Lord said it, uh, uh, it's lawful to do well on the Sabbath. So we come out here literally to teach our people like you that what? You're an Israel. You already knew you were Israelite. But I should show you that you got to keep the faith and keep the commandments of God in order to get that eternal life at the end of the day. Right? So you got to keep the. So, so now, what? We missing like what? Two more? That's like two more commandments. He gave this brother three. I told him five. Let me get, let me get a little bit of excitement. Oh, so I mean, yeah. You like yeah. marijuana, brother? Yeah, I ain't gonna let you. Alright. We want, we, hey, listen, all of us was there one time. Every, we gotta understand that once we understand who we are, we gotta put that stuff away. It's not easy. Not something that everybody wanted to hear. Brothers was looking up, looking into doctrines that was saying that uh, can you smoke? Brothers didn't want to give it up. At the end of the day, you want to, you got to confront, you got to, you got to confront reality at some point. And you want to find out, no, you can't smoke. So that brother over there, smile. <laughs> you got to face that. Stuff. Grew out the ground. It's yeah, natural. yeah. Like, what's well, natural? The Lord said He gave us herbs to eat, man. No, we can't. We can't be out here smoking, brother. Right? Somebody read that. Uh, what you got? Let me get uh, First Corinthians. This is First Corinthians, chapter three and verse sixteen. Right. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? So your body is the literal temple of God. The Lord had a physical temple in the land of Israel that got destroyed twice. Now the Lord, and guess what? He really dwells in you now. Right. Watch this. Read on. That the Spirit of God dwells in you. Right. If any man. Defile the temple of God. So he said that if any man defiles the temple of God, the way the way to defile something. Uh -oh. Do it wrong. Do it wrong. Right? You put smoke. Would you run up to the third heaven? Say you have the stairway of the heaven. You run all the way up that joint and throw a smoke grenade in there, and then run back down. And let that joint go off in the heaven. Huh. So fill it up. That's the, that's the temple of the Most High God. Right? It said if any man defile the temple of God, read. Yes. Him shall God destroy. What did the Lord say? Him, Him shall God, God destroy. destroy. So you don't want to be caught up and get destroyed because you couldn't put the weed on, right? Right? Like the brothers up here got the black and miles and cigarettes. You guys, you guys put that stuff on, right? Because the Lord said if you get caught up, if you defile his temple, he's going to destroy you at the end of the day. So you're going to have to make take time. You might smoke three months a day. I'm not telling you to go cold turkey overnight. Some people can do that. You can. I would. I'd advise it. But you got to at least slow down. You know what I mean? You got to slow down and eventually put it down. That's what's going to have to happen. Because that's showing signs of repentance. That's the Lord working with you. Especially if you ease up on it, you're actually trying. That's what the Lord wants to see. Because the scriptures literally tell you that the man, the Lord is a, uh, 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 who the Lord actually, First Samuel 2 and 3. Yeah, through the Most High God, actually the race. Right? So you actually showing, putting down the